Oh, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or YouTube, however you're catching us. Thank you for joining in. I appreciate the views and the support. Marcus here from Aroma Time Bistro, and I am going to talk a little bit about sake today. Hot sake versus cold sake versus unfiltered sake, the milky sake versus clear sake versus better clear sake. Just a quick little rundown. Um, sake is an, um, a really wonderful beverage. Uh, sake houses are called brewers or breweries. It's not a beer, but they call it sort of beer, beer, rice beer, but it is it's not sparkling like um, a traditional beer is, but they just refer to them as brewers because they're brewing rice to make sake, basically. So um, a couple of points on sake. You have hot versus cold. Most people are used to hot sake, and most people don't like sake because they don't like hot sake. I love sake, um, but I wasn't introduced to cold sakes until, gee, 15, 16 years ago when I started getting a hold of some really high quality cold sakes. I would go to a sushi bar with friends in my early 20s uh, in the restaurant industry. We'd go to sushi bars and um, we'd all order sake. And I was like, what's the big allure about sake? I don't like this. So sake can be heating and good sake can be heated as well. It's not a general rule that all hot sake is bad, but I will tell you that if you're going to order sake and it's coming in a box, in a box and sitting behind a bar somewhere and it's going through a heated machine, chances are that sake is not the best sake. Sake traditionally was heated to cover the flaws. Um, during World War II and things like that, back in that era, sake, hot sake became more popular and popular. They would mass produce it and basically um, heat it up to mask the flaws. Hot sake has carried on. Now, I don't drink hot sake and I don't keep my sake that's cold. So now let's talk about cold sake. So there's two main types of sake. There's a filtered and an unfiltered. So you have typically something that is clear like this. And this is the glass I recommend drinking sake in. This is a, um, it's like a spirits or a cordial glass. This is made by Riedel, this glass. And folks, this is clear sake. This is Junmai. Um, this is a Junmai sake from Tiwatsatsu in Japan, northern Japan. All right, there's Momakawa, which is from Oregon. Uh, both of these are certified organic, both these sakis. Um, the only uh, organic brewer, what I'm told, in, in Japan, and they have a property in Japan, and they also um, brew here in Oregon, uh, the uh, Momakawa. So this one is clear, folks. This is what's in my glass. That's clear. This is, if you see on the label here, it is going to say June Mai. Junmai, so the way the sake's, the quality of sake is, is measured is by how much of the rice that they take off. So they polish the rice or they basically shave it down and they put these in tumblers and they basically shave off layers and layers of the rice. The closer to the core of the rice you get, the closer to the center of that rice you get, the more delicate flavors, more elegant, the more softer, um, the more expensive. Uh, those are daiginjos. Uh, as opposed to Junmai, Junmai Gin. So it goes Junmai, Junmai Ginjo, and then Junmai Dai Ginjo. So those are, that's the layering of polishing. They literally take anywhere from 10% of the rice and they pull it down to even 50%, depending upon the grades. So this is a Junmai Ginjo. Okay, so it's not Junmai, it's Junmai Ginjo. Dai, Dai Ginjo, if it's a Dai Ginjo, that'd be the next uh, level, level um, uh, of quality. You know, you could take this and you could heat it up lightly. It's really, you know, if you want to do that, you could do that. As a general rule, this is the cold sake, all right? So there's a debate if you talk to sake experts of do you heat, do you not heat? A lot of them say, yeah, heat this up gently. And um, some sakes you're going to actually increase the aromas. Of course, as we heat things, the aromas increase. Um, but again, hot sake was typically made back in the day to mask flavors. And there's still a lot of bad sake out there that's heated up to mask the flavors. Now, Diwatsuru, the same same brewer right here. This is their Nigori. Now, Nigori is an unfiltered sake. This one, the bottle must be shaken before you consume it. All right. And this one pours out creamy. See that? That's white. This is unfiltered. These are delicious for dessert, folks. This goes great with chocolate. So think outside of the box of sushi. Or, uh, or Asian food when it comes to sakis. You don't need to have it with uh, sushi or Japanese food or Asian food. It can go outside the box. 
a lot of people gravitate towards sake because there's no added sulfites. So uh, this is again rice, no added sulfites. So a lot of people who have sulfite um, sensitivities will drink sake. Now I like this sake in cocktails. You can make a killer mojito with creamy, unfiltered sake. Um, you omit the rum and you put this in, and you muddle all your your lime and, <coughs> and mint, and you can make a really awesome mojito, creamy mojito, lower alcohol, um, and you can drink, of course, drink more of them without feeling the effect of alcohol, like you would a, a normal one. So you can just see how creamy that is, like that, right? So. Mm. The sake tends to be richer. Um, it can cut through more food. Uh, that's why I suggest this with chocolate. Again, this is very delicate sake in general. Um, the cold sakes, or the, at least these sakes that I'm drinking here, they are um, delicate sakes. Um, and folks, this is the proper glass. This is what I would drink sake in. I would not drink it. You know, the Japanese, of course, do those little tiny cups. Um, I like to get my nose in, smell, get my get get you know, the aroma be able to swirl it. So I find this glass to be the best. This glass is about a six ounce glass and we filled up about two ounces of the sake. This is what we serve here at the restaurant, by the way. That's our, our sake glass and these are our sakis. Now, Diwatsuru Brewery makes a rosé sake. This sake comes from a special purple or brown rice that this brewery here in Northern Japan actually resurrected this particular type of rice. They're the only ones that have this rare purple rice and they make sake out of this. So this is rosé sake. Now we have this available by the glass right now uh, from Diwatsuru um, from Northern Japan. And again, all of their sakis are certified organic. They are organic. Uh, they're very strict with that. So um, this is really cool. This just came in, by the way. This is rosé sake. Cannot wait to start serving this. Uh, really, really, really cool. Um, I'm not sure if it's labeled by a grade like Jun Mai or something or what exactly, how much they polish it. A lot of sake experts will say, well, how much is the rice polished? They want to know the percentage of how much the rice is polished down to see what's going on uh, with it. So yeah, so rosé sake. So quick recap. Hot sake typically was made to cover up, to cover up imperfections. Um, this was bulk sake. This was industrial sake. That sake still exists on the market today. Um, I would avoid, personally, sake that comes in a box that sits on a behind a bar and you heat, it's heated up through this whole machine. I would avoid that. Okay, that's the most popular type, by the way. Um, the next type of sake is cold sake, and you have several different grades: Jun Mai, Jun Mai Ginjo, and Dai Ginjo. Those grades go with the amount of rice that they polish, or the more they get to the center of the core of the rice. The, the more elegant, distinctive flavors, um, the the um, the uh, 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 elegance of the sake comes from the center of the rice. On the outside, where the brand is, that's where more the imperfections are, and the more impurities and the, the off flavors. So the more that they hone that in and 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 polish it and, and and hull it down, the more of an elegant, more expensive, lower yield, higher quality sake they're going to make. So Junmai, Junmai Dai Ginjo. I'm sorry, Junmai, um, Junmai, Junmai, Ginjo, and then Dai Ginjo. Those are basically the three grades to look for when you're out sake shopping. And this one is a rosé sake. That's a rundown on, on sake, folks. Um, you can make cocktails. You can make martinis. You can do a lot of really cool things. You can go online and search for sake cocktails, and you will find a ton of recipes. So if you want to um, go out um, to a restaurant or you just want to drink a couple martinis or some beverage cocktails, you don't want that high alcohol, Sake is your best choice. And think of sake way beyond Japanese food and sushi. It goes with a lot of different foods, including the um, unfiltered one, which I love with chocolate. This is goes, this was amazing with our chocolate tort, by the way. So, all right, folks, that's it on sake today. Thank you very much. Appreciate the views, and we'll talk to you later.